good morning. It's Monday morning here at Samson's Mountain. Thanks for joining us. Today, we have a deer here that's damaged his nose, so I'm gonna show you how I repair a nose pad on a white-tailed deer. Uh, you can see right here, he'd been fighting and got jabbed in the nose here with a, with a tine from an antler. So when this got skinned out, we just had to cut this piece out because it was full of infection. So I'm gonna show how I replace the uh, nose pad here. It's pretty simple. What I use is a uh, epoxy scope. And I'm gonna be using the black. That's the color of the nose anyway. So we'll get started. It's a two part epoxy. I'm gonna be uh, mixing this up right here. Doesn't take a whole lot. We'll also be using the uh, safety solvent to smooth this out. Okay. I got safety solvent here on my, my lid. I'll put that on my uh, sculpting tool. Just gonna kind of work that in there. And I'm gonna fill in all that that was missing there. And you can use your finger, however, whatever you can use to spread that out, get it flat, and try and pull all that together. Luckily, this nose pad wasn't damaged bad enough to where it went over into the hair. It was just in the nose pad. If it would have went into the hair and we had to have cut some skin out over here, then I might've had to use my flocking tool to uh, replace some hair. We're just doing the uh, nose pads, so this will be a easy one. Put that safety solvent on my finger and I just kind of smooth that out and work it all in, kind of blend it in. Okay. Now he's also missing a little bit of his bottom lip here, so I'm gonna rebuild that. And I just take a small piece and roll it up in my fingers and just form the bottom lip. Now on the bottom lip, I'll just take a pin and put in the little lines to give that a little detail. Now on this nose, you can see all the little indentions around the, the dimples here, all the little grooves. So I'm gonna take my pin and I'm just gonna kinda connect all this together and make my own little grooves. That way when we go to put the, uh, the flesh colored paint on there, it will get in those grooves and it'll give it that fleshy look. And there's easier ways we could have done this. We could have ordered just a whole new nose pad and reinstalled that but we're gonna do it the creative way. So now I've got that worked in, I'm gonna go over it with the, uh, the flesh colored paint. Be using dusty pink on this. Normally I would let that uh, 
epoxy sculpt set up. It takes it about an hour or so, hour and a half. But uh, since we don't have that much time, we're going to go ahead and see what we can do and try and get this done here to show you how we, how we do that. I'll put a little bit of lacquer thinner on my paper towel and I'm gonna wipe this off now. I'm gonna try and be real soft with this. I don't wanna mess up the epoxy sculpt. That'll give that bottom part of the, uh, the nose pad there that fleshy look. So now I'm gonna come in with some nose pad gray. And give that nose color back in it. I like to come in at an angle. That way I don't put the gray down in the, uh, the grooves of that nose. That way the flesh tone will, will show through. Another thing you want to do is keep your airbrush clean. Don't mix your colors. Okay, now we've got the nose pad painted. And I'm going to take my little fine brush here and I'm going to get all the paint off the hairs. And we still haven't done the nostrils on this deer either. We haven't uh, put the pink epoxy sculpt in there and done that. We're just doing the nose pad today. Now, I'm gonna use the Mod Podge. We're gonna paint over that, that nose pad now and seal it up. This is the what you'll see mainly in uh, your stores, uh, like uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, places like that, your craft stores. This is the main kind they carry. All right, now I've got that painted on there. We're gonna let that dry, and then we'll come back and put the, uh, the beads on the nose pad, and then we'll paint it, and it'll be finished. So everything's dry. Now we're gonna put the uh, beads on the nose. And them upside down here. This takes a kind of a snitty hand. It's kind of hard to do sometimes. Wherever you redone the uh, nose, you can kind of just make up your own pattern with the, the beads here. Same thing, it's Mod Podge. It takes a little bit to dry, but Mod Podge is a little bit thicker than Elmer's glue. Uh, that makes it easier to make these little beads on here and make them stand up. If it was Elmer's glue, it'd just run down. This nose really pop out now. After you put the little beads on there, it really brings it back to life. Now we'll let that dry. So everything's dry there, dry enough to uh, paint now. So I'm just gonna go over that with the jet black. Same way I did the first time, I'm gonna come in at an angle. I just wanna hit the outside of that nose with those beads that we put on there. Just kind of fade it in. Now 
All right, so we got that painted now. Um, finishing touches on that. Brush off the hairs. And that's a whole lot better nose than what he had to start with. So that's pretty much how I repair a nose pad. Uh, this is that was an easy one. So I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna finish up the nostrils. And uh, but but that's the main the main uh, way we do that. Uh, we just use the epoxy sculpt. Uh, if it's too bad of a tear, if it goes into the hairs. Uh, then what I would have to do is use my Static King the flocking tool with the, with the hair, replace the hairs, and then I would come through and airbrush those hairs the same color as you know, the color they're supposed to be, the white and the brown, and just kind of blend it all in. But uh, this deer is close to being done now. I'm going to go in and, and finish that up later. But that's the basics on how we would repair a nose pad. So I appreciate you tuning in. If you decide you want to come and shoot a big white tail at Samson Mountain, just give us a call at 618-771-3992. Thanks.